part. If you could single out one part, what was the best part? Of having my daughter at a young age, being able to grow up with her. Mm. Like being able to, you know, like when I was going through things, she was right there. Mm. She was growing with me. You know what I'm saying? Like it was like I I was going to picture when she was like five, four or five, and I was like in my 20s. And we both look like babies. Like, I was like, you're like my little sister in my life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, we've grown together. My baby's about to be 18. I'm about to be 37. And it's like, we still, we, we like, the best part of that is like, that's my best friend. <laughs>
and I done been all around the world, but ain't nothing like Baltimore. Mm, okay. Philly is close to it, but Philly is the, our cousin for sure. Yeah, it's our cousin. Philly, Philly is our, yeah, cousin. our first cousin. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It's, <laughs> Sometimes I go out and be like, damn, I'm it's home. Too, yeah, it's too, <laughs> too similar. Like, they got all the border houses, everything. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it is. Yo, how does it how does it feel? And not to make this strictly about Baltimore, but like I'm from there, you from there. I'm sorry, it's, it's what it is. And I got a lot of things on my chest, so I'm I'm, I'm gonna ask you a lot of questions, like oh, it's invertedly, good. it's gonna be yeah. <laughs> directed. But um, I'm curious, how does it feel being in the industry, being from back home? Like, cause you see people in the industry, they move differently, and yeah. people is a lot of I, I can say it, you can't say it, it's a lot of weirdos in the industry. You feel Absolutely. me? Absolutely. And it gotta feel like like a part part. Does it ever feel like partially like you don't belong? Sometimes. Always, but I, see, I still. But you asking the person who still got their same friends from third grade, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I still like my my crew is still the same. Like when I go home, like you gonna see me with my girls that I was hanging with in high school. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like in in elementary school, middle school. Um, but I keep a small knit group, and yeah, industry is very industry. That's what it is. It's industry. So you have your industry friends, you have your friends. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's it's very. Like you said, like you do certain things and it's like, it's like, oh yeah, well, you're cool. Da, da, da. And they turn around, I was like, oh, call my manager and they'll take care of it. Or, <laughs> Can you sign this contract? And you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like that. And you're like, oh, I hear the industry. But you'll meet people and you'll think they're super down to earth, super cool. And the next thing you know, it's like, oh, my lawyer hit my, nigga, we just had this conversation. Right. You know what I'm saying? But and it is like what I, it is. <laughs> I understand the business behind it and um, Paul's friends. Absolutely. If anything, um, mess up, we very like, like professionally unprofessional. So if you see anything mess up our head, <laughs> fix it. I'm just like, you know, yeah, fix it before we, yeah, but make sure we keep that closed, though. But, um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just some house rules, you feel me? So, um, make sure you look good at all times. But, yeah, yeah. I, I, want, I was curious to know, was it hard to adjust? And, and is it, do you find yourself still being hard to adjust every single day? No, because I stay grounded. I'm, I'm in my own circle. So, when I mm. go out to industry events, I go to events, I do certain things. But I'm not an industry chick. Mm. Like, so that's the difference. Like, I don't. I ain't real mixy. Right. I ain't never really been like that. So, um, it don't really bother me. But, so not even in the beginning, because even like, you know, they say, you might not be an industry chick, right? But some things, because of who you are, mm -hmm. requires you Absolutely. Different, so, a different you. Like, yeah. So, you, it's just like work. Mm. So, you put that on. But even still in work, I still carry myself a certain way. Like, I still, uh, I'm still, gonna, you still going to get the authentic tan. You show up as you. Um, at all times, like even on Love and Hip Hop, like it might be certain certain things that they say. Oh, um, we want you to say this, and I'm like, okay, and I go to the person like, yo, they want me to ask you about your husband. That's cool. Oh, uh, you know, if they say yeah, then I would. If not, no, I'm not saying that shit because I'm a woman first. I'm who I am. I'm not gonna get on TV and do something different on TV than I would do behind cameras. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Damn, how like uh, is it? How do you move? in such a weird space with integrity, with respect? Like, what does that even mean to you, to have it's no way. It's no way to not, it's, it's, it's in, integrity for yeah. me uh, is standing on who you are, mm. like not settling, not, not, not selling out, not selling your soul, like certain things, um, like for instance, I seen, there was a name, Bad Barbie, little pretty little yeah, white girl. Yeah, the chick that got in, what, yeah. the Jerry, not Jerry, I don't know. She, yeah, she was in one, but she's yeah, yeah. gorgeous little white girl. I think she's so sweet, I love the little girl, she's so cute actually. Um, but made millions of OnlyFans. My integrity mm. as a woman won't allow me to make OnlyFans. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. I could be making some money up there. I'm sure this is somebody, it's some people that want to see my OnlyFans. But you know what I'm saying? finessing the OnlyFans, so you could have just did the bathing shoot. I ain't going to give you the game like that. Bro. I know. I heard I could do some other things. I don't know what I might, but no, I, it was, it was, it was more so this, I, 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 could, I wouldn't because it was a stigma of it. Okay. Like people thinking that like, you know, if they go up there, they're going to see me giving some top or getting bent over or something. Yeah. like I ain't about to have that persona about myself you know what I'm mm. saying over a few dollars okay. um yeah so that's it and it's just and I'm not knocking nobody who do it don't no, get me wrong it. get it how you live baby I ain't mad at nobody so let me ask you this <laughs> no no since we there hold on hold on hold on let me ask you because I always say it's a finesse but I'm curious do you think it's a finesse when um like people promote their OnlyFans right and they promote it to be like something that's like explicit like triple x mad nasty and you go in there and it's just like a picture in your bikini. No. Shit. Get it how you get do what you do. It's yeah. always a finesse the game. You cops, yeah. you cops. Shit. Oh, yeah. The f hell no. Do it. That that's some shit I would do. That's crazy. The hell? <laughs> I how you think you might see something and then you go to that and it's like, hey y'all. 
<laughs> Yo, that's bad, bro. See, you y'all could just you could just yeah, do that. That's, I surely would. That's why I don't care. Like, if you got OnlyFans, you need to be showing some. You feel me? Like, and that's why I don't have one. But that's what I'm saying. Like, as far as like, you got to know who you are and what works for you. Because what what what's for what I learned as I got older is, um, what works for you. What works for someone else might not work for you. No cap. You know what I'm saying? What God got for you is for you. So sometimes um, when you go against what you know or what you know is not right for you, mm. you get punished for it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's why that's how I like try to keep that mindset. Hey, first, man, I know I uh, said I appreciate you a hundred times. I'm going to keep saying it, but um, it's so refreshing to hear you speak the way you speak, right? Mm -hmm. and, it, and for you, it's nothing. Right. But for me, it's refreshing. I was just telling my camera girl because, like, it's so, like, as as weird as it is, mm. it's so many people who aren't just, like, just cool. Yeah. That, like, they, there's so much stuff behind they them. They look cool and they act cool on camera. Then when you, but then in reality, it's not really giving that. I know how it be. Oh I know I get God. it. That's why I say it's so refreshing. I just yeah. want to say thank you again. I appreciate yeah. it because, like, it's hard having these conversations, especially, like, in, in my space where I'm, I'm getting some notoriety. I'm so, starting to get, like, guests that I really wanted. And when you meet these people, it's like you would think they one way, and they not. No, I, I was. Th I, th I have. I had. There's like people that I'm like that I've been fans of since I was a kid, and I've had opportunities to actually hang and meet with these people, and I won't do it because I'd rather be a fan because I'm afraid that when I meet them, it's gonna fuck up I'm my tight. whole childhood dream. You know? Nah, that's not cool. Cause you're too smart. I'm mad. No, I do that I all the time. The I do. I swear, I've done it uh, plenty of times, and I've met people and. And I'm like, oh my god! Like I'm such a fangirl of it. Like, um, like uh, my one of my best friends, she does a lot of Mariah Carey events, and that's like one of my biggest. Like I'm, uh, I will see her. That's like my idol. Like growing up, I love Mariah Carey. That's my girl. And my best friend says she's such a sweet lady. She's nice. She's very sweet. And she's like, won't you come? You know. And, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I want her I don't to be want Mariah Carey. Yeah, like, I want to keep Mariah Carey like Mariah Carey for me. Yo, is 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 that crazy? Because even going into you, because only because like, I've been disappointed so many times. So I was going to ask you, have you ever <laughs> met met somebody that you like? Yeah, not crushing on, but like that was like a, you was a fan of, and it was like the total opposite as you thought. Absolutely, yes. Okay. I have, I have. I can't say no name. Yeah, of course. I, def I definitely have. No, well, well, um, and then there've been some people that I wasn't fan of, and I saw them, and I became a fan, or became like, like damn, that's the you best. know? Yeah. That's the. You could give me names for that though. That's a good thing, right? Um. Hmm. There's a few. Yeah. It, yeah. It was a lot a for few me. people like, that damn. I met. I'm like, damn, they mad cool. Like, or they they good people. So, mm. oh, I love them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's a few people. That I mean, I, I would like assume that. a lot in the um, was it Love and Hip Hop? That was like that was the. The show, right? That I was on. Yeah, what was it? Uh, yeah, I was on Love and Hip Hop. Okay, I was on a few shows though. But then you had the the the. But in reality TV in general, I'm yeah. assuming. Well, I never was never fans of people on reality TV because that was my peers. But I'm saying you might you might have seen somebody that you kept coming up, and you'd be like, man, you didn't like them, and then you might have met them. Like, yeah, that's true. Fired. That you like, I don't I don't think I would like I don't think I would like them from what they portrayed on TV. But then yeah. I met them and they're actually cool. Yeah. No, that 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 is true. I, I have met people like that. that. And I'm like, oh damn, I. Ain't, I didn't think I would like her, but she actually cool people. You right. know what I'm saying? It's like, funny how unintentionally we judge people. Like, we don't even know. We it. do. And that's why I try to make it a, a thing not to do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, not to try to judge, because people do that to me. Mm. But then there's people who actually follow me and know me. Like, it's a thing. Like, if I go out, like, my followers or my fans, they come and they like, they. it's like they know they can hug me. It's like, yeah. they like, come here, girl. Like, they just know. But then I see other people at react to other, you know, react to other uh, uh, influencers or or, or people that they like, and it's like, oh, hi, can I have a picture? Can I take mm. But with me, it's like, get over here. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, damn. Like, no, we already yeah, done. Yeah, like, like, we know each other, girl. You like, my cousin. <laughs> I was going to actually ask you that because, like, as much as you could say, I don't want to meet Mariah Carey, right, or, like, somebody No, I would you... love to. I just didn't want to, yeah, you no, know. I get that. As much as you could say, I don't want to meet somebody that yeah. I'm a fan of because you don't want to ruin that experience, I want to let's flip it, right? Because you are just being you. But in you being you, you had a lot of success. Right. So there's a lot of people who probably look at you as like one of like how you looked at my right carry. There's yeah. a lot of girls and a lot of women who look at you just like that. Yeah. Do you feel like if somebody was to say that about you, right? Like, man, I'm scared to meet her. I'm like, like, girl, people do that all the time though. I'll see someone and they'll DM me and be like, Oh my God, I just saw you out. I wanted to say something, but I didn't want to be you know, I know I didn't want to intrude. And I'm like, Well, next time you see me speak, mm. it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I don't mind. Like, if I'm out and I don't want to be bothered, I stay in the house. Like, mm. when you out, like, if, if a picture, it makes somebody day, 
it's a fucking picture. Mm. If, I, if even if my head, I love my head, I'm a mess. I'm like, I look a mess, girl. But come on, let's put a filter on. Take a picture. you know what I'm saying? That's like dope. I ain't. I'll never say no to pictures, not if I can help it. Mm. You know, if it, you know what I'm saying? Like if that's that's just something that that's now the a, pressure of that, right? Got to mm. be hard though, because sometimes you might not want to, but you know. There's plenty of times I don't want to, but I still do it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because it's like it makes their day. It's, if a picture makes somebody day, then it's a picture. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like it's not if I didn't want to be bothered, I stay in the house. Now if I'm going through something, like I remember, um, and my auntie, my auntie passed away, and I was coming from, I was coming walking out. They had the like they had the casket by the door, so when you walk out, you see it one last time. And I had the bitch where and the lady walked up to me as I'm walking out of my auntie's funeral, who I'm named after. That's crazy. And asked me to sign my auntie's obituary. No way. Oh God. And I, I had to just look at her like, you got to be kidding me. I just learned this <laughs> this this word in the last two years. Y'all yeah, judge me, I don't care. So ain't it crazy how people just don't have no decorum. Decorum, I said it no, right. No, decorum, yeah. They don't have no decorum about themselves. Like, yeah. bro, I'm at a wedding. Yeah, a funeral. I mean, a funeral. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm at a funeral. You. Yeah, nope. Why would I even? And then sign my, sign my auntie's obituary. Sign her obituary. That's insane. Yeah, and I just looked at her like, somebody get this lady away from me for real. But even in those moments, right? Because again, right, we can't ignore the celebrity in you, right? We could talk like you regular all you yeah. want, but you're a celebrity. Like you right. super popular, you out of here, pay homage to that. We can't ignore that part. So even in those moment, moments in your most vulnerable spaces where you might not want to do it, but you know that reacting in a certain way can fuck up some money. You know, the yeah. bag. And see, the thing is, when things like that, I, you know, I, I, I check it because I was, I was, uh, during that time I was really hurt and um, my mom wasn't even there. So it was just like, you just lay on my face. When people do certain things, you know, to, only time a person can really get me out there is you f with my people. Like I would just did, a, just did a, a party, um, a hosting for for Snoop in Baltimore, and oh, somebody oh, pushed, you? yeah, and somebody pushed my niece, and my security had me by like up in the air, and I was like trying to fight him to get off because I'm like, I just see my niece in the middle of something, and I just try to jump over because that's my niece, yeah. that's my, so all the celebrity. You got all the whatever they want to call it is out the window. That's my family. Like I'm going ten toes down for my family. So that's that's the only time you get me. Like you, you what I love. Like you can say to me, and I'm like, oh girl, bye. But it's my family. Ain't it crazy how how cool or calm you can be for yourself, even when like I like when it comes to spending money, anything in life, right? It's like you could be selfish to yourself and put your feelings aside all you want, but the moment it comes to somebody that you care for, yeah, it's, over. it's like a totally different person. Absolutely. That's I'm a crazy. Leo, so I'm very protected by my tribe and my 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 my, my herd of, of of people. Like I I I I love my people, so I go way harder for my people than I do myself. Mm. Now I do have a shopping problem, that's one thing. But Yo, this episode is sponsored by the morning meetup. Man, shout out to my guy David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built Multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created the morning meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and winging in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. Other than that. No, that's crazy. My daughter's a Leo, so. Oh, she is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, she's going to be the shit. Yeah, yeah, that's my she dog. She is the shit. That's my dog. It's funny because you When's are. When's her birthday? It's August the 12th. Okay, I'm yeah. July 30th. Yeah, it's 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 um, it's um, so many things that, like, we share in common that I didn't even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to get it? Yeah, because I can't do that with you. <clears throat> Go ahead, get it, get it. No, but, um, no, yeah, Leos are very, very, a lot of people don't understand um us Leos. They think that we're like, um, yeah, what it's okay, babe. I'm yeah, gonna break it up. No, nah, okay, we want, you, we want you to post this. So I need you to look perfect. You feel okay, me? Like, okay. I need you to look good. But, to fix um, that shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is the shit they don't understand. You feel me, okay. MJ? Um, you put it behind my head. Leo's, uh, they don't, a lot of people misunderstand. Yeah, a lot of people miss. Oh, what did she finish? Okay. 
a lot of people misunderstand Leos. They think, like, you hear a lot of things about, like, uh, I think you have two Leos. You have a very selfish Leo. You have the very giving one. Okay. Like, there's two two Leos. I'm, you, I, my heart on my sleeve, like, everything I got, if I got it, it's yours. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I am. But uh, people be like, oh, Leo. Now, Leo men is totally different than women. Okay. But the Leo, like, they think that we're like, oh, they're conceited or they're, they are, you know, this or they're materialistic. We're That's not. what they say. No, no, I'm saying. Yeah, I'm but we're not. Words. We're not. We're just, we're aware of who we are. Mm-hmm. We have expensive taste. We, we can't help that. Like, I can just go in a room and be like, oh, my God, I love that chandelier. And it could be three of them. And the one that I so happily love is be the most expensive one. It's not my goddamn fault. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, like, Leos are, we're very good people. So, and we're very loyal. So if you had thing. to guess my sign, what would you guess? Mm, a while, yeah. I don't know why I'm thinking of Taurus. Damn. What's your sign? I said we had a lot of things in common that you might not. Oh, have. you a Leo? Mm-mm. What? I'm a Gemini. Ugh. Say <laughs> <laughs> no. Why do? <laughs> no, 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 no. Why do? This is one thing. And granted, because uh, why? Because a Gemini, right? Yeah, that's why you think we got some <laughs> common, huh? We do. <laughs> How old you had your daughter? Like 18, 19? Yes. 19, right? 18, 19, yeah. My girl had. Uh, so my daughter. That's my. My uh, stepdaughter. Uh huh. Is am I saying it right? No. Yeah, yeah. We don't. We don't say step. Yeah, that's what I said. I, that's what I said. But yeah, I'm just painting a picture. Right, right, right. Got my you. stepdaughter. My do- My girl had her at like 18, I believe. Right, right, right. So I, it's a lot of things that I didn't even know. You feel me? She yeah. helped me out. So shout out to her. She's the co-producer of this show. <laughs> oh, okay, helped. dope, dope. She's not, but I'm saying she, for this show because oh, she okay. helped me with my research and stuff and understanding who you were. Right. She's oh, a fan of you. Come on now. Yeah. Tell her thank you. So that's why <laughs> when she was telling me like, and I'm like, wait, that's so crazy. But anyway. Two points I was going to say. You see how that face you made because I was Gemini? Yeah. Because your experience with the Gemini? No, but it's not even. I have two Gemini boyfriends, not just Walker. My boyfriend before Walker was a Gemini. That, that ah. was your baby father? No, no. No, that was a that was a Pisces. Why my girl said the same thing about Pisces? You no, know, like, Pisces men, are, they act like females. They have female tendencies. Pisces men do. Okay. It's inevitable. Fuck it. They're All great right. lovers, but that's Back to Gemini. We ain't about to kill Pisces. No, we ain't going to kill them. <laughs> but, uh... You said uh, that because you had two Gemini boyfriends. Yeah, and they both was um, liars. <laughs> uh, Yo, they call they bro. No, but Gemini said Gemini. No, Gemini liars exactly. No, but no, but Gemini they are amazing lovers, and Gemini have this thing of making you feel like you're the only woman in the world. Like they will make you feel. But they play a lot of mind games. Y'all play a lot of I mind games. That. And y'all need a lot of assurance. For sure. You need a lot of reassurance for to sure. know that you we love you and that you're the yeah. only one and that we would do anything for you. Yeah. Like they just want to be catered. And yeah. Because the, yeah. you know what we're going to do? Y'all do the same thing. We're going to give you the world. Yeah, y'all do. They do. They Plus give more. You the world and you lie while you do it too. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny I was just talking about that because I don't think I'm a liar, bro. Oh, you, you don't think so? No, no, because you know why you don't? Because you make yourself believe you're lying. No. <laughs> not, not, what I used to do, honestly, what I used to, immature Gemini, yeah, I they used to grow omit. Up. Y'all just have different personalities and this shit going in your head. Y'all lie by om- omission, too. Yeah, I was about to say, I, I used to omit, for sure. Mm-hmm. I never would lie, like, a blatant lie. I would be like, if you but ain't that's ask lying. me, if you ain't ask me, I'm not, not telling gonna tell, you. Yeah, but that's men, period. Men always, like, I, I hate when females like, oh, my boyfriend tell me, or, or, or he told me, like, a situation happened, or he ended up telling me the truth. No, baby, he told you 50% of the truth, but men will never, ever tell you the 100% truth. You only could get you get fifty percent of it. You lucky you might get sixty percent of it. <laughs> it might be a oh, I ain't fucking. She just sucked my. D-. <laughs> but they ain't tell you that they fucked her two nights before. But that night that she just only sucked. <laughs> Yo, what's up with you? I'm just telling you that's what that's what that's what that's what. You gotta relax. You gotta. <laughs> I'm just saying that's what lying by. Like y'all just like, yeah. I don't do that no more. Oh, that, I mean, are you guys tell like uh, uh, men always tell like you know fifty percent the truth. That's it, and we not gonna talk about women because women. I'm about to say we, that's we better than women because y'all don't tell the truth at all. No, we never lie. We always tell the truth. What are you? That's talking a lie about? right there. What are you talking about, bro? Cut it that out. That's crazy that you even think like that about us. But anyway, so next, the next question. So anyway, so that's <laughs> I was gonna say I was gonna say one because like usually. Every time you could tell the the person's past relationship, right? You say that you say the uh, sign, they be like, whoa. But you know what? I don't. I, I be like, bro, I don't understand because like we'll say we hate this sign, but, but that be with that person. That be the best sign, but 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 because y'all went through something, y'all broke up. It's like they were terrible, but it's like we erased. No, but all I wouldn't of the good say I wouldn't say Gemini's are terrible because okay. like I was just saying with uh with my ex husband, he had his ways of showing, but he was amazing when it came to me and my daughter. Loved us to death. Great provider. Whatever we wanted, we did. He treated us like queens. You know, he made he definitely set the bar high. Mm. So it was like uh like. 
I know that what it is. Like I, I certain things as a woman, my daughter knows as well. Like when we walk in, like we we expect for you to open that door. We expect for you to grab. Like I don't carry groceries in the house. You said the bar, by myself. Kinda, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Like I don't. It's certain things that I don't do. I I I, I don't pump gas. I don't have to wash my car. You know, saying well, shit. I, and until you know you get single, then you do it by yourself. Yeah. But even if I'm dealing with someone and with a man, like I don't feel like I sh- those things I should have to do yeah. because of what I was groomed. The like. standard is already set. It's like you gotta come in right here or right. You know I what I'm saying? Even, I don't even understand what this is going on. <laughs> yeah, I, that's just what it is. So it's like you know. But do you think so? It's crazy. I was gonna ask what I was gonna ask you. But do you think? Because it sounds a lot of things you a lot of character traits that you name. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a Gemini. It sounds like y'all had a lot. A lot. No, that's just a man. That's a real man. No, not not washing car. I'm talking before that. When we was explaining, we was explaining who you are, mm-hmm. right? A oh, lot of a Gemini. Mm. You sound like you got a lot of things in common. No, Gemini's. In, yeah, Gemini's and uh, Gemini's and the Leos are very compatible as long as the Gemini submit to the Leo's ego. I've read that before. Now that that's that's a thing, but because you read it right, that's the thing. Yeah, it <laughs> sound pretty pretty accurate to me. Oh, but no, God. but even still, but I see I'm, as as a woman. Woman, I feel like we, 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 I always, my grandmother used to always tell me things like, well, you know, your grandmothers be the, your grandparents are the most wisest. And, mm-hmm. you know, as you get, when you say shit when you're younger, you don't really pay attention. When you get older, you're like, Fact. damn, I know what she meant by Fact. that. You know what I'm saying? Fact. My grandmother used to always say, um, you always have to stroke a man's ego. Mm-hmm. Like, and I get that. Like, there's things that you say to, you, you have to, like, just how men compliment women, you have to compliment men. Mm-hmm. A lot of women don't do that. I feel like I tell my nigga, like, damn, you fine. Like, I'll say that. And they look at me like, bitch, you, shit, you got a nerve to be touched. Shit, nigga, you look good. Like, I say <laughs> no, that because, yeah, yeah. you know, like, they don't, I, I want them to know how I feel. You know what I'm saying? I had to learn how to grow up and, and, and be that woman that's, you know, to, you know, be able to compliment. A lot of women feel like it's all about them. But sometimes, like, you know, no, no, no matter how beautiful you are, you still got to be able to compliment a man as well. You see a bracelet? No. No, you got to relax. Oh, I'm sorry. Got you, bro. I was just telling them I left my... <laughs> My Von Cleef She got chill, himself. man. See how she trying to stay. I just, you feel me? I got like a couple of them. <laughs> no, I wasn't. <laughs> you feel me? It's a skincare and shit. You feel me? Like, my shit is really doing really well. We got the store like, down the street is doing really no. well. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. We're going to keep supporting you, bro. Yeah. But not. so I wanted to, um, being from Boston, so I wanted to talk about so many things, right? But um, I will be doing myself and my audience a disservice if I didn't start from the beginning, if you okay, don't mind. Cool. I wanna we're gonna talk about everything if you have time. But um if you could, where did it where did it all start? With what? Like where did it begin? Like just the the success, the fame, you being Tammy Rivera. Right? So not before so not before, but what when, when did the fame start? When did me like how far if you had to to name your starting point, where would you start it? Um as far as what, the success, the happiness, yeah, the success. The, but what do you define the success by? Mm. That's the thing. Is it notoriety? The success through our eyes. Through your but eyes. But then you can repaint the picture of what it really is, what you found out okay. it to be. Um, I say, I guess I would say the the notoriety came from loving hip hop. Okay. Starting off with that. Um, but how did you get there though? You had to. Through Waka. Okay. So okay. you know, Waka was um that was my boyfriend, and you know they came and they presented the show to us before. So how did y'all meet? We met in Miami. Uh, just me going with my best friend one day. Shout out to Danielle Marie, um, my third grade best friend. Uh, she had a boyfriend who had a condo in Miami. And they asked us, to, um, you know, she was like, let's go down. So he paid for us to come down. We went. And we. she was a big fan of Walker, like a huge fan. And she wanted to go to the club that he was performing at. And I was like, I'm not going there. I'm like, it's real ghetto. I want to go somewhere, like, you know, high class. End up going to the spot that I wanted to go to, and he ended up be like walking Damn. down the street, and then I just somebody grabbed my hand, and it was him, and he just would not go. Like he just, it was so funny. I was telling somebody the other day that because I was straight ball, it was my first time going to Miami and everything. So what I was are you doing, boy. Yes, yeah, so I was real good. Like, but I'm, you know, but I'm still dressed up. My heels really cute as up. And we were talking, and I remember him saying, "He said, I don't mean no disrespect." Wait, Shorty, you bad as a motherfucker, but you hood as shit. <laughs> and I was like, is that a compliment com- or no, That's a Gemini thing for sure. <laughs> I was like, is that an insult or a compliment? Like, I don't right. know how to feel about this. And he was like, no, nah, I'm just saying, like, your looks don't match 
your attitude? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, yeah. is that bad? He's like, nah, that's is great. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? But it was funny to me because I'm like, yeah, I guess that's the bottom with me. Mm. Um, but I was just raw, honest. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he like, come, you want me to go with him to the next day? Nigga, I gotta go home. I got a child to get to. Like, you know, this is cute. It was nice meeting you, sir, but mm. you know. Um, but yeah, just from there, like he told me he that I was gonna be his wife the first time he met me, and I thought he was on drugs, and I mean I guess he meant it, but that's how it like started, and then for loving hip hop presented itself, we declined it, um, then it re represented itself again. Can you answer this for my mother because she gonna keep on calling. I about to say you can. I told you we. we no, it's my mother. Yeah. My mother's gonna keep calling. Um, then it represented itself again, um, and we, you know, he was like, you know, I'm a you. I was like, listen, because I was, I was styling then, and I was trying to, he didn't want me to style no other rappers or anything like that, so it was like, I was kind of at a standstill, because all the people who wanted to book me was rappers, but he was like, oh, they only want to book you because of, right. you know. Shit, I'll pay for it, fuck it. Yeah, so it's like, you can do my video shoes, but like, <laughs> nigga, I can't, I only can do you, so right. um, he was like, you know, I'll let you do the show, like, I, you know, so that way, you know, it can, you know, get you out there, shit like that, so. Mm. Shout out, like I say, shout out to Walker, because if it wasn't for his platform, then people wouldn't know Tammy, so that's why I always always show homage when it comes to him with that, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, but with but with that being said, I went through a lot on that show, um, you know, that people were able to, you know, know to see through my relationship with Waka or um I took that platform and I created my own brand and my own name off of it because I wasn't just about to be Waka Faka's girlfriend slash wife. Mm -hmm. I had to create Tammy Rivera, T Rivera brand and you know, and I did those things most of the time when me and him wasn't even together. You know what I'm saying? So, and some of the stuff played out on TV where the separation and being heard and going through things and still trying to push through and use what you have. And the only thing I had at that time was the Love and Hip Hop platform. And, you know, and sometimes it might not have been the best. Uh, I wasn't in the best state. Like, my husband out. You might not be in the best light, but. Yeah, it wasn't in the best light. My husband out, out and cheating. We're separated. I'm on a TV show. I can't act like things are great. I'm trying to push a brand, so I had to expose a little bit of myself, mm. but still be true to myself and take make lemonade out of lemons. You know what right. I'm saying? So that's what I did, um, and that's just pretty much what it what was. What was the best? What was the biggest lesson in that? In all of that, you think? The biggest lesson for all of that is like you know, everything happens in timing. Like what's meant for you is for you. You know what I'm saying? Like even when I released my music, I released that, that last season, the, my last season on Love and Hip Hop. I was on Love and Hip Hop for like four or five years, off and on. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time anybody ever knew I could even sing. So it was like, everything is in this timing. Um, you just got to be patient, trust yourself, trust the process. You know, so that's that's what that was. I talked to a few people that, like, is starting to get into um, reality TV. And I always hear from the OGs that's, that was in reality TV, I always hear about how, you know, they go into it with um, the best um, idea of what they want for themselves. But it's reality TV. They always spin it. Right? Yeah. If you could, I mean, what I was never the... set out to be a reality star. <clears throat> that was never nothing I wanted to do. Right. And I say, yo, I want to be the best reality. But a lot of person. girls say that though. A yeah. lot of girls say that that I hear. Yeah, it's like it, you, I, I solely went in there for a platform to display what it is that I was trying to do. Mm. It wasn't. I never thought because you know back then this was new to us. Like yeah. this love and hip hop was like new. I declined the first season, so it's like love and hip hop was like a new thing. It was like, you know, no one thought, like, reality TV now, that was back then, was like the, almost the beginning of, you had a real world, you had this. And it was and bigger, too. It was, yeah. It was, because it, know, it wasn't as many. It wasn't as much. Right. So, you know, that was never my goal, you know? Mm. Like, nowadays, I feel like I have people come up to me and they're like, oh, I want to do reality TV. Um, I want to be a reality star. What can you give? What advice to me? And I said, I can't give you no advice because I never wanted to be a reality star. Like, like if you're going in there just for that that purpose, Without any goals, it defeats the purpose. Like mm. you know what I'm saying? Like you going there just to just to be in fights and arguments and mess, but not have a goal at hand. Like even when I was going through what I was going through with Walker on TV, I was very closed off to like the network and to my producers. They'll tell you, and I was like, I'm not talking about that shit. But then at the same time, if he's on a blog doing something and I'm filming, I can't act like everything is all good because it's been exposed mm. so at that point i had to make a decision like okay y'all want me to talk about this i'm gonna talk about that and this in my fashion show i'm gonna talk about that while i'm just doing something in my business so when you see me crying you see me crying in my shit you see me mm. crying at my show 
You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you remember Tammy had her fashion show for her swimsuit line? And she was crying. Yeah, she was crying at her fashion show for her swimsuit right. line. If it's going, because a lot of times these reality TV shows, they want to catch you in your vulnerable state and when you're hurt. And, and it's great TV. To promote them. Yeah. But it's like, nah, okay, we're going to promote them. At least I'm going to get something out of it, too. Period. And so, that's the thing which you got to know how to do. What do you say to, it's so many girls who, um, who's, because we have the ones that want to be reality TV stars, right? But mm -hmm. we have a, a, a list of girls who, who do it to promote what they got going on, right? What would the advice would you give them? Because it does come with you might think they want to just show my parents and like and 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 my career as a rapper, and that's what they tell you. But they that don't that's not good TV. It's never no. It this this never. That's all. There's always like I've done from loving hip hop. I've had my I've executive producer my own show. Um, walk was it uh Walker and T what the flocker Walker and yeah T what the flocker yeah, yeah. I did uh merch boot camp. We've done um. Growing up in hip hop, a slew of, of you know what I'm saying things. So it's like it's all the same. Mm. Producers, their job is to get the tea. Their job is to get the juice and the information. Um, what advice do you get that girl who who thinks she's about to go in just and on some positive stuff? Stand on your stand on your morals, your respect. Stand on who you are because you the when you get on like the people do things for camera. And they regret it later. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like, they'll get on camera and be like, oh, you know, the producers will say, oh, yeah, we want you to throw the drink in that girl face and do this. And then you do that. And then you look back. This this shit is on TV. So this is going to play out later on. You know what I'm saying? Like, be be mindful of who you are as a woman. Like, if you're true, you want, what, do, what do you want your daughter to see when she look back at it? You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you want? Like, you know years from now you know, you just got to pay attention to like stand on who you are like have some morals and respect just mm. don't do anything for tv so i want to go deeper pause i want to go deeper into that as far as like um so throwing a, a producer saying throw this cup in the girl face that could be something obvious right mm -hmm. what are some things that some schemes that they try that you might not that might not be as obvious right that somebody might not you might just walk understand. you into a room with somebody like mm. you like when i i think i, I filmed a scene with d d betty smith betty's idol and d smith and um, they were like, oh, D. Smith is going to bring her friend. She wants to, you know, she's interested in a swimsuit or whatever. And I was like, okay, cool. Mm. Whole time they knew that the friend didn't like me, that, that Betty had a problem with me and she wanted to confront me. But I came in like, oh, hi, beautiful. Da -da -da -da. I'm all nice and shit. And it was like, as soon as she took the moment, she could to, to throw jabs or f say how she felt about me. And I was blindsided. So it's like, you might, there might be times where you might walk. So as I've gotten older and I became an OG and that shit, I wasn't filming with nobody I didn't know. Nobody knew. Oh, Tammy wants you, mm, nope. Mm. And, you know what I'm saying? They were like, oh, well, it took it got to the point of producers like, Tammy's not going to film with her. Y'all know y'all got to introduce her another way or I ain't about to act like somebody, my friend on camera because there's no loyalty there. Mm. There's no loyalty. When them cameras come on, if you don't, like, there's certain people who, like, Rashida, I remember when she was going through her uh, situation with Kirk, um, she would only film with me and probably, I think, uh, one, other, one of the other people on the show. I can't remember who it was. Because she knew that I wasn't gonna come on camera and say anything mm. uh, disrespect. When Tommy would talk about her mama issues, Tommy would like I'll film with Tammy because I trust Tammy because she know I ain't gonna get on camera and switch up and do no shit for no camera. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you have those and those people that I will only film with. I'm like, oh, I only talk about this with this person. Like I'm only gonna talk about this with that person. I'm not about to bring my business to some bitches that I barely know and they say something stupid and I have to smack the shit out of them on camera and we fight it and it's like you know what I'm saying? It just don't make sense. But you can make you have the right to make those decisions, or do you have to be like a little seasoned? I think I'd be a little seasoned. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I'm saying? And I think it's shit. But if you stand on what you stand on, then that's just what it is. But you have to make that decision as well. Oh, am I going to sacrifice this for TV? Or you have the right to say, you know what? I'm not doing that shit. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't make them respect you, ain't nobody, you, then there's no respect. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I never really cared about, like, oh, if, if I walk out or if I say no, they're not going to use me for the next scene or they're going to be like, I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to stand on who I am. And y'all ain't about to make me out of mockery on this motherfucking TV show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's just what it was. Damn. So I want to be selfish in this interview, but selfish in a way that I can help so many, like, people that was in your position and not there now, right? I feel like you was, you was vulnerable on TV for so long and you had to take a hit for so many different things. Mm -hmm. And you, were, you, you had to kind of even grow up and mature in the public eye, right? right? Me being selfish, and I'm curious, though, when you was going through those things, I'm pretty sure it was a lot harder to talk about it then than it is now coming out of it. 
Yeah, absolutely. Like there's certain things <clears> I wouldn't <throat> talk about on TV back then, or I was like, no, no, no. But now that I'm older, I'm seasoned. I know who I am. I know, you know, I was. That was new to me. So as I'm going through things in life, my the cameras. Imagine going through things that everybody go through in life, but yours just so happened to be on camera. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you got so many women like, oh, she dumb as shit. You know what I'm saying? She should leave that nigga. He she did it. But it's girls that go through that shit every day. But because mine's on TV, you have the right to speak on, you know, to comment on and, my to, and to criticize. Mm. Because you know what I'm saying? Like because mine's is on TV, then it's just some people who just feel like you know because of how you look or how you dress or what they perceive of you they assume that like oh you a certain way not knowing the truth or what you're really going through or or that you're human mm. you know what i'm saying so that's how that goes most of the time. so and, and that's what i say so selfish when i say selfish because like my, my show is about human humanizing people right mm -hmm. but in humanizing people we got to talk about what you went through to highlight the growth in it, right? right? But a lot of times when I'm interviewing people who's actually in the middle of going through those things, they don't want to talk about that. And I'm like, bro, this is the perfect time to talk about yes, it. Yes, but I understand. I know, let me tell you something. The first, when I did the scene on Love and Hip Hop, um, I think that scene kind of goes viral to this day uh, when I cried at my fashion show. Sometimes I look at that now and I'm like, damn, I was really fucked up. I was really hurt during the time like I was really going through something. That scene, like, I, I didn't mean to cry. It just, just was a, it just happened and that was something I didn't want to happen I was like oh my god I hope they cut that out that scene touched so many people like mm. I literally I'm talking about from women and men I, I, I was in sacks buying some shoes and the lady like oh the guy bought your shoes and guy he wasn't trying to talk to me or nothing he was just like yo I hope you and walk get together I don't never want to see you on TV crying like that again mm. like you're a stand-up woman like you know what I'm saying I'm like damn niggas even you know what I'm saying watching this that's crazy mm. uh females like yo I feel you I feel what you're going through sometimes you but you have to be in the space to be able to be transparent some people don't you know especially us we like kind of like to keep our shit behind closed doors and make it seem like you know everything is perfect because you open yourself up to criticism mm. you know what I'm saying like I've no I, even not even just with walk with my daughter people you know, when I had my shows, like they criticize my parents and criticize my daughter. They, it's anything that you expose or open up to, people have they're gonna criticize. So you just gotta be have tough skin and be able to know how to deal with that. You know what I'm saying? And just be able to handle what comes with that. That's mm. all. Some people aren't built for that, and I get it because it can be a lot. Like it took me a, to, a lot to grow tough skin and be like, I don't give a fuck what these people say. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, it's crazy. I always tell people like I feel like holding on to your story is. And not, I'm not saying this to them, saying that they are selfish, but holding on to the story is a selfish trait because there's so many people who can learn from it. Yeah, it, it, I wouldn't say it's a selfish trait, but I will say that some you got in order for you to, you, some people aren't healed. You got to be able to heal before mm. you can tell your story. And so it might not just be a selfish trait. It might be a person who just haven't. A timing thing. Everything is in this timing, everything. Mm. That's crazy. Yep. That's that's like you really helping me at this point. Like to be honest. <laughs> yeah, like, everything is in assignment. If you feel like that's something that you're not ready to open up about, or it's hard for you to talk about, it don't make you selfish. You know what I'm saying? That just means like, okay, I got some healing to do. Like I gotta mm. this something I gotta, you know. And then when you you'll know when you heal because like I used to tell people all the time, like it was it was it was something, um like I'll tell stories about like me and my ex husband. Like shit that he did, and people were like, yo, that's crazy. Like that, that shit ain't funny. I'm like, no, nah, it was. It wasn't funny back then. It was hurtful, but now I can laugh at this mm, shit because I'm I, in a different I space. It. I got through it. Mm. I healed through it. You know what I'm saying? Like, even some things I would tell him, and he'd be like, damn, that's fucked up. Like I don't like that. And I'm like, and I would. He'd be like, why are you laughing? That shit not funny. I'm like, yo, that was. It ain't funny back then, but now I can laugh at it. You know right. what I'm saying? It's like that's. It's just like when you dating someone and you go look back like. The fuck was I thinking? I was crying over that nigga yeah, like, yeah. ew, what was I thinking? But you know, it's because you've grown through that. So mm -hmm. most of the time that's just what it is. Damn, that's crazy. So you acknowledge that um Waka was able to basically give you an opportunity and you seize the moment, right? right? Absolutely. But does that ever get frustrating and because I like just from the few interviews that I watch, and even now, and mm -hmm. even now, like we're gonna talk about it, but every yeah. time you have an interview, they, they bring, bring up Walker. Walker. Yeah. Is that ever like first thing? Was like you just accept it. Like I was just saying in the last interview, I just did. Um, it's like I would say like with Bobby and Whitney. Mm -hmm. God yeah, you can't soul. mention one without the other. They them they was separated for years. They had their own relationships. They was remarried. But you say Whitney, 
even if you didn't mention Bobby, you thought about him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You said Bobby, you thought about Whitney, yeah. even if you didn't say anything. So yeah. it's because the limelight sees that. Mm. And they've seen us. I mean, Walk was together for almost 11 years. So you saw that in the time span on TV, on social media, and all these things. You watched us get married. You watched us raise Charlie. You watched us go through our turmoils. So that is always probably going to be attached to me and him. Like, he talks about it, too. I was just saying he was telling me the other day, like, yo, I, I, he'll say sometimes, like, because that's still my, my friend. So he'll say sometimes, like, yo, I got hit by a tra- Tammy train the other day. I'm out with some <laughs> with a shorty, did it up. Bitch, come on, like, oh, where's Tammy at? Like, bitch, you know we not together no more. Like, right. why like you, you know that, my, too. You trying yeah, to say Yeah, you know, why you trying to fuck my shit up? You know, right. we laugh about it. Um, Yo, but that's drinking, true. Bro, you bullshit. Cause my shit got water down. You got no straw, nigga. You need a straw too. Yeah. Oh, damn, you, you know y'all from Baltimore. Shit. Y'all ain't get no straws. Look, look, no look how I said it. <laughs> we ain't get no straws. You need a straw for real. <laughs> yeah, uh, that chapstick. Anytime you ever let me, let me, let me give you some more. Give me tip. game. Give me game. A lady needs straws. She needs straws because we have a lipstick and shit. Oh, okay. It gets wiped off every time we touch the glass. So I'm, re- I'm, keep I'm learning. Fine. Okay, yeah. my bad. I don't even think we have any in here. Do we? No. Can you check if you're online? Nah, until next time, don't Damn, and my bad. Sure, I just learned some game. And yeah, make sure you tell me, little Tammy, because Tammy, we got scrolls for you. Nah, facts. Yo, um, uh, I know we're kind of everywhere with the energy, but yo, being a teen, teen mom, right? Mm-hmm. A teen mom? Raising a child at such a young age. You. Mm-hmm. Not her being a teenager right now, but like you raising a child at such a young age. We hear so much. We get so much flack. We hear so much flack on it, right? Mm-hmm. But I feel like... Just from my experience, mm-hmm. this might sound crazy. I feel like it almost might be better. I agree. Like, like not saying, let me just say this, not saying go out and get pregnant at 19, 18, no. I'm happy that I had my baby at that time because I was able to grow with her mm. and we were able to grow together. And um, shit, I'm still young and I can still, you know, be on that ass like I'm supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? Um, tell her right from wrong. We still close enough. To where so I can relate to some things, I can give her that great advice and not be too far removed from where she's at. You know mm. what I'm saying? So I'm happy that I had my daughter. What was the age best I... part of that though? If you if you could think of it. The best part of what? Having her at a young age. What was the best part? If you could single out one part, what was the best part? Of having my daughter at a young age, being able to grow up with her. Mm. Like being able to, you know, like when I was going through things, she was right there. Mm. She was growing with me. You know what I'm saying? Like it was like I I was going to picture when she was like five, four or five, and I was like in my 20s, and we both looked like babies. Like, I was like, you're like my little sister in my life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, we've grown together. My baby's about to be 18. I'm about to be 37. And it's like, we still, we, we like, the best part of that is like, that's my best friend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm uh-huh. her best friend. Like, I can give her relationship advice about her, 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 you know, when she have a little boyfriend and she want to talk about that, give relationship advice about that. Um, even talking about things like if when she, uh, you know, like even sex, like if it's mm. something that she wants, or when she want to throw thought about having sex, or like you know, it was like, oh, mommy, I think I'm ready for this, or I think I'm ready to you know take it to the next level. I'm able to sit there and be like, well, listen, girl, and the fact that she can be comfortable open and to talk to you about that, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. No, oh, it's lit. Mm-hmm. We outside. Oh, cool. Bam. Come on, man. Come on. Somebody Shout out to you. MJ, man. I got you, dog. <laughs> Yo, I think um, on the outside, I met my, my, my girl and um, my daughter is the, literally the same age gap as, as you as and your us, daughter. Yeah, yeah so dope. on the outside looking at it, right, I was, my mom's was the grandma. Like, like yeah. you said, my mom's was 70. Um, she Now she's like 74. So it's like hard to relate or go to them about yeah, certain things. Exactly. But it's so many other things, it's right? A, yeah. Like, um, things that we wasn't able to do, like um, setting our boundaries with our parents. Yeah. Saying no to our parents, right? Yeah. I think looking on the outside, for me, I think the best thing is the, the for her to understand where we went wrong in our relationship and teach that to her. Like, it's okay to, like, when I when I tell you something, I'm going to give you a reason why. Why? Yeah, see, I said because I, said, I said so. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, I feel like the older generation, like, I see it now when, I, when, I, when me and Charlie was filming and people come up there, oh, your daughter, she, 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 she always talking back. I think in our like, and this is something that we I've I've noticed with with especially in our households, what goes on in this house stays in this house, right? Mm. That's what we grew up on. So many molestations happen in the household that people don't speak about it because what goes on in this house stays in this house. Come one, on, man, this is a conversation. Saying? Let's yeah. go. Facts. That's one. Mm. Number two, if your children don't feel, if you tell them don't do something because I said so, 
how would they know what's wrong, what's right? Like I always was able, I want my daughter to be able to express to me how she felt because <sighs> if you go somewhere else and if I, t- and, and, and absolutely you treat adults with respect, one. For sure. But secondly, every adult, you don't do everything an adult tells you to do mm. or say. That's one thing I never say, like, oh, if that adult tell you to do it, do it. No, nah, because adult can tell you to do some shit that's not right. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But we grew, this is our generation, like, Facts. adults are yeah. right. I never pointed that to my daughter that adults are right. If you feel a way, speak on it. Now, there's a thin line between being disrespectful and opinionated. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and sometimes I got, and that's when the, that's when the term come in, like, all right, now I ain't want to get little friends. You know what I'm saying? And my daughter's like, well, which one is it? Are we friends or are we not friends? We got them as a thin line. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But... You know, that's where that comes into play. Like, okay, bring that, scale that shit. I ain't, you can talk to your friends, scale it down a little bit. Mm. But I, I want to hear what you got to say. Yo, you, that's you feel crazy. what I'm saying? No, for sure. I'm with you. Like, that's, and that's why I admire my girl and, and, and my daughter relationship so much because she taught me so much, bro. Like, just when it comes to setting your boundaries. I remember um, at one time, like, you know, like, we used to have our parents or our, our aunties and uncles come over and, like, at any time or just, like, you know, give me a yeah. hug or just being able to say no. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like nah, I don't want no hug. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's okay. Like, yes. not feeling like you have to be pressured because, like you said, a lot of molestation, a lot of things that was going Absolutely. on that we didn't even know about because of the actions that we were pr- portraying to our kid. And we didn't even know we was doing Well, they didn't even know they was doing that. No, they didn't. Forcing us over at our family house or whatever the case may be. Now they doing some shit. I can't even say nothing. I can't say, yeah. You feel me? But the fact. That's facts. The fact that, like, I, saw, I watched her, like, raise this, 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 young, this young lady and say, you can speak up. Right, like absolutely, you and you're not this. being, you're not grown or disrespectful for speaking your for speaking up. You know what I'm saying? That's not that's mm-hmm. not grown mm-hmm. or disrespectful, but that's why I say it's a difference between societies. I mean, different generations actually, mm. different generations, and what we were taught and what was you know. And then sometimes, like like I, my my daughter, her friends, like they might come in. They you know they teenagers, so they 17, 18, the crop top, little mm-hmm. booty shorts and shit. I was and about to go there. You know, her friends, they know they're comfortable around. Like, I, I had one of her friends who was at my house and she tried to cover. I said, You gotta cover yourself up. I said, You know, I don't, I don't judge my daughter friends or how they dress or how they look. Mm. Judge you by your character. Cause, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I that ain't something that bothers me. I, now, yeah. I will tell you, it's like, Oh, y'all just like some little thoughts, some little city girls. But, I, you know, I laugh with them and shit. Cause I did it. I was once a teenager and none, none of my friends, my friend's mom, all my friend's mom thought that I was fast. I was virgin. All the ones who were dressing like little boys with sneakers on was the ones having sex. But I was wearing heels, crop tops, little rise jeans, and I was a virgin. Mm. But I just like to dress that way. So now that I am, you know, a, a mother myself, I tell them, like, girl, I don't think you grown for that. I, I would never be like, oh, she grown because the way she look. Mm. No, you have to show me. Even if you, like like one of my daughter's friends, and I, she was like, you know, she was sexually active before, you know, when they were, you know, younger, I guess, like, you know, 15, 16, whatever. And I was sometimes like, I don't judge you for that. I was like, you know, you did something that most teenage girls do that don't make you grown. You don't make you fast. Now, if you sleeping with a whole bunch of different boys and you just, you know, then then that's something we can address or talk about. But you losing your virginity to your boyfriend don't make you a, a fast ass little girl mm. you, because black woman. That's what we say. Oh, she fast as shit. Don't know what's going on with the little girl. Don't know what happened. You know what I'm saying? A lot of women, a lot of people don't speak up. I was younger, something happened to me, but I didn't say anything because I'm like, I was gonna, someone was gonna be like, oh, it was my fault. I wanted it. Oh, she was too, cause she too fucking fast. She too grown. Mm. Every time a little girl do something, she's grown or fast, but little boys do it is okay, it's acceptable. You know what I'm saying? And that shit, that says like again, mad props to my my lady for this. Like she was just just told me like, as a guy, not as a woman, right? As a guy to look at a, a 15, 14, a young girl and say she's grown or like that's too grown that says more about what you think because if you wasn't thinking that like what are you thinking to think that she looks too grown like anything in the black community women say that like oh she wear her hair straight remember growing up you like if you get your hair straightened oh she trying to be grown wow she trying to be grown so, she want her hair straightened so we learn our hair is we, black women have beautiful hair we have curly hair we have straight hair we have you know it's like so we have the ability with our texture of hair to be able to do use it in different ways. You feel what I'm saying? I was growing up. I was uh, my father's from the Gadawas. So I was mixed. And my sister and I grew up. All my all my siblings is black, and I wanted fucking crimps, but my hair was too curly for crimps, so I couldn't get like the hood styles. So I used to be mad as shit. You feel mm. what I'm saying? But at the same time, those were considered you being too, too wrong. wrong. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, but that like, says I, more about you than me. 
I, my, that's my point. Like, I don't let my, I, I don't mind my daughter. Like, she was wearing pink hair when she was 10, blue hair, green hair. Who the f- fuck said that was grown? A grown ass woman walking around with pinky green hair it should it's be childish. More, that's what I said. That could be considered childish as but, opposed to a, a little girl walking around with. Is yeah. that childish? You know But let me grown? even fit that because you should be able to express yourself however you want to. But then you get you that shit out your to. system. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, my, now, you know, like, express. That's a part of. Of you, I want. I always wanted my daughter to be able to be her own individual, mm. create her own lane, be be able to figure out who she is, what she wants. I don't want to implement who I am on her. Mm. And us as parents, sometimes we have the we do that a lot because we want them to be who we want them to be. When really they're just gonna be who they are. You know what I'm saying? So that's just what that goes with. And I shit growing up, and I, I moved to Baltimore when I was like six. From Virginia, and I was country. Oh, so you're not even from Baltimore, man? Come on, I'm not man. from Virginia either. I was born in California. Oh my god. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm like a, my, my father. You know what? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Navy. What they call a Navy brat. My, my dad. Oh, was, you. Oh, my dad okay. was in the Navy. My mom met my mom's from Norfolk, Virginia. So my mom met my dad in the Navy. She moved to California. I was conceived in California. Left when my, my dad got locked up when I was one. Left California. Moved back to VA. Left VA when I was six and moved to Baltimore. No, you so, from Baltimore? We gonna claim you. Yeah, cause I mean, cause I'm I've been in Baltimore. Like if you take me to Virginia and then Norfolk, all my family on my mom's side is there. You give me a car, I don't know where I'm going. I got a GPS. You give me a car in Baltimore, I'm getting the fuck. You nah, feel me? <laughs> like it's a city, I'm bro. gone. It's different because I grew up there. Yeah. Like Baltimore bred me. It grew. I grew up. I left. I left Baltimore when I met Walker. You know what I'm mm. saying? My 20s and shit. So it's like that's the city I know. That's where I grew up at. But even when I when I uh, moved from Virginia, I moved to Baltimore. Um, they used to call me Spice Girl. I used to wear big old platform heels. I used to always dress different. Like, they know, like, anybody you know me that met me from Harlem, I went to Harlem Park. That know me from Harlem Park Elementary. I played football over there, yeah. Yeah, they met me from Harlem Park Elementary up into uh, Milford or, 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 or Woodlawn Middle. Like, though, that's, I always was different. Always mm. dressed different. Always. It's crazy because even... And that we don't we don't acknowledge how much of the the behavior that we like exude is learned behavior, right? And how fucked up it is. For example, I don't know if you ever heard of National Gene Day. Mm-mm. So National Gene Day originated from this is one of the f- most fucked up stories I've ever heard. Really? So it was a girl who wore jeans, blue mm-hmm. jeans, right? And she was raped, and I don't know if she was killed, but they literally said somebody can go, you can look this up, fact check, check this. They literally, um, the guy got off because they said her jeans was too tight and she was asking for it. That happened to me before where I was in a past relationship. I'm not going to say this and shit. I was young. And um, the guy who I was with, his older brother, like um, I was, I used to work in his, so I was like 17. Um, and I was dating his brother who was 17, 16. I was 18. He was 17. And his uh, older brother was in his 30s. Hmm. And I was working in his shop. And he came in. And while I was, like, in the in the shop, like, doing the work in the office, smacked me on my ass. And was like, get up. And, like, try to rub my feet and shit. So I was mad, uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I'm trying to process what the fuck was going on. So I jumped up. And I went outside. And I'm, like, kind of scared and shit. And I didn't know how to tell my boyfriend at the time. Like, yo, your brother just low-key hmm. assaulted me. You know what I'm saying? Like. Because this is brother, this is the person you look up to. And when I told him, you know what the motherfucker said? He's like, uh, you walking around with low-rise jeans and shit on and crop tops. Like, so that's, you're not going to address the fact that you're, mm. your brother. And mind you, I was, that was when I was 17. I was fucking a size one, two, fucking not smaller than Charlie back then. And back then, you know, you wear your crop tops and shit. But like, and it fucked me up. That's why I knew I'm like, oh, he's a pussy-ass nigga. Because at the same time, like, I ain't trying to... As a, I didn't feel protected. I didn't feel like I felt like oh because I chose to to express the way I dress the way I dress like that means that um, um, he could touch me. Man, you Did, know what I'm saying? You fact checked it. You saw it. You saw it. Yo, no cap. So like, and that's it's, that's why we gotta be careful with the message that we put out because even like a few years ago I had a conversation where like a girl was saying women need to dress how they want to be addressed. And as much as I can, I don't ag- agree with that yeah, shit. nah, facts. As much as I can acknowledge the bullshit that's that comes with it, shit to say. Exactly, and that's exactly why the world is the way it is today. Like, the fuck you mean a woman need to dress the way she dressed? Because I might feel like dressing like I might want to put on some booty shorts one day, and the next next day you might see me in a whole guy. Like, that's fashion for me. 
Like, I love to express myself in fashion. So I might be dressing like this. I might have a baseball cap on, some baggy jeans, and a T-shirt one day. And then the next day, you might see me dressed like this. And another day, you might see me dressed like I'm, you know, in a full suit. Mm. That you know, I'm still the same woman in each outfit. But you still deserve respect in each and outfit, every no matter woman what. Deserves, and that they all deserve respect. But that right there, to me, just shows me that's a that's a woman like either you insecure or you broken. Mm. Insecure woman walk around with that like that mentality of like a woman. That's a woman who who probably afraid of any type of woman being around her man. Mm. That has like I used to always say that like you I could dress. I could dress down, but you can't hide my ass in the like. What the fuck, Jason say? You can't hide, tie a sweater over that ass and hide it in pajamas. What's the difference? You can still know you got to shape. You got to shape. You got to shape. You, you feel what I'm saying? You like, can be that's a nun inevitable. and still get disrespected because and, and you are full, fully covered. You yeah. still can get addressed with disrespect too. Yeah, that's it. But it's like a lot. Like I said, it's it's it's, it's fucked up. But I always have my. That's why I have open from my daughter, from a young little girl. I had these conversations with her. Mm. Like to let her know, like I don't give a f- who it is, what it, like let her know. Anybody t- what they do? Did you? This is not like she knows, like you know, and to the point where she got always like, all right, mom, you can stop asking me that now, because like, mm. I wanted her to know, like it's it be uncles, it be cousins, brothers, it don't sisters, aunties, people do shit. Like I don't give a fuck who it is. You speak on it. You know what I'm saying? Don't ever be afraid. That I'm always on your side. I'm here for you. If you don't. T- if nobody gonna go to bat for you, your mama gonna go to bat for you. Right. You lie to anybody else, lie to everybody, but don't lie to me. Because mm. I'm the only one that's gonna, I'm gonna serve time for you, I'm gonna ride for you, I'm gonna do whatever. So, whatever it is, don't lie to me. Yo, it's cr- that's, no, that's a fact. And this is probably a question I should ask Waka if I, if I have the pleasure to interview him. But I'm curious, um, you, you were saying that uh, at one point in time, your baby father was trying to get uh, child support from you. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> Um, but was he still trying to be in uh, Charlie's life while you was with Walker and him um, being that, that father figure? It was a real touchy situation with that. Like, um, her, she hasn't spoken to her dad in over five years. Um, no birthdays, no conversations, no nothing. She's seen him at his auntie funeral. He barely acknowledged her. Uh, but he before took, that, was he still, was he trying? He used to be a great dad. He took, before, we, he was a great father. He, uh. I said t- we we had a, a custody agreement where though the judge kind of factored my finances off of Walker. This is before Love and Hip Hop for anything, and he pretty much was making me pay for him to see her every every month. Yeah. So I had to fly her out to see him every month, all of that shit. And I was doing it for about two years, and then I went back to he actually sent me to court for child support or for for more time or some shit. And the we got the judge, and the judge was like, "Oh no, nah, this is ridiculous." And, you know, he factored things in and he was taking me to court. He was trying to take me to court for years to try to get full custody of her and all this crazy shit. And um, the last time we went to court, the judge actually took away from some of his time. He actually uh, made him pay child support because <laughs> um, he wasn't never paying. Because I'm not the type of woman that's going to go to the courts and ask the courts to give me child support for. I ain't, you, that's, that's your response, I ain't gonna beg yeah. no nigga to pay. I ain't you not. I'm not gonna go to no white man and make a, that man to, to beg my a nigga to take care of mine. So I'm gonna take care of mine, and whoever I'm with, I'm gonna make sure they take care of him too. Right. You feel what I'm saying? So I ain't never been on that type of time. But when he took me to court to file for full custody, my lawyer was like, "You have to, you have to respond to this. You have to ask for child support. You have to ask for these things that he hasn't. He's been getting away scot free for, but he keeps harassing you for this, that, and the third, whatever." So. We went to court. He got less, and the judge was like her being away from her mother because he had every birthday with her, and I would call her. He wouldn't answer, like evil shit. And the judge was like, oh, every year away from her mother is ridiculous. Do you you haven't been paying child support since she's been there? You gotta pay this. Um, you know, he was just hitting him like you know, tagging him where it was at. I was like, yeah, just in the third. And um, after the court, uh, after years and years of him taking me to court, and that happened, the he barely. You didn't didn't get we stopped seeing her like mm. I sent her, um, I was sent her when she's supposed to, but it was a lot of verbal abuse, which I used to go through with him. And I'm older; my daughter's old now, so I'm freely talking about it. Because before, you know, I never would talk about it. You go in any of my interviews, I never talked about this nigga. Never talked about um her dad out of respect for her. What her we call him spurned on out of respect for her. Um, but yeah, so you know it was verbal abuse, and people don't understand where I was with him. I was going through physical abuse and verbal. Mm. But I never took that away. I never placed my 
because we were both young. What I went through on her, that's still your father. You still respect him. You got to make your own decisions. Yeah, you know what mm. I'm saying? And like my mom, I was like, when she get older, she'll see him for who he is. Um, and shit, he's the, the verbal of you started. Like, oh, for a long time, I thought I had to do counseling because he would say stuff like, I mean, look at you. You bald head. You don't got no edges. You don't tell a little black girl she's bald head. She don't have no edges. You don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, uh, you, you like she was 12. I remember she used to try to wear crop tops because that's when the crop, I always say the crop top age start when she's like mm-hmm. when they like 12. Mm-hmm. It gets shorter and shorter the older they get. And, and um, pop my yeah, you gotta be like, yeah, don't take that shit off. So <laughs> instead of him coming with that approach, it was like, oh, you want to dress like a thought like your mother and you know, shit like that and evil shit that he would say. And you know what I'm saying? Like, and and, and it started to sit in your head. No, it started fucking with her head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and, and I I told him, I was like, I sent her an email. We had a little app that we communicate through. And I was like, listen, until you get some type of counseling or something, they can throw me under the jail, hold me in contempt. You're not going to keep verbally abused because verbal abuse is worse than physical. Mm. And the courts don't acknowledge that as much as they do physical abuse. If you don't have a bruise on you, don't consider it abuse. But you fucking my daughter's head up and you making her look at herself differently as a, as a beautiful black little girl. Like, I, my daughter used to look at me like, Mom, why my hair not like yours? Like, you got beautiful hair. My daddy said my hair nappy and mine got no edges. And he would do shit like if I would get her hair braided, take the braids out, make her walk around with no edge control, no oil, just put her hair up. Like, that shit is evil. Mm. Like, why wouldn't you want her to feel beautiful about herself? Or, How hard was that for? It was the worst fucking thing I could, like, like it was for who, me or Waka? I was so. I mean, it, I was going to ask because I'm, I'm being again. I'm being selfish. I was wondering, like, was him being daddy since he walked in the, the the house, right? How hard was him dealing with that? Because even as you're, you're not like biological daddy, and it, uh, there are some battles was, that you try to take. It was very hard for him. It was he for years. He would hear about it, but he never like. I remember when we did, we went to trial for two days for the last custody battle we had, and that was the first time Walker ever went to court with us. Mm. And after the court, Walker literally got on his knees, and he was like, I'm so sorry. All mm. these years I heard you talk about this nigga, he said, but I had to give him a benefit of a doubt as a man. I could not believe that this nigga could be that much of a bitch. Mm. That's what he told me. When he heard that the, the, the judge asked him, the father asked the court, he asked the court, uh, how, because you know, I didn't send her on one of her visitation because of the verbal abuse. And he said, how did you want her to be prosecuted for being in contempt they wanted me he wanted he said he wanted me to be held to the maximum time served in prison and the judge even looked at him and was like you want me to get this straight you want the mother of your child to go to jail for the maximum time for being contempt and she's like and i think that showed the judge like your interest you're you're more angry and bitter at her than it is about your child because Mm. you no matter like, even when I got up there and the judge was asking me, like, well, why didn't you send her? I said, well, he's like, whether justified or not, why didn't you send her? And I was like, with all due respect, Yana, I couldn't. When my daughter's screaming and crying because she don't want to get on an airplane to go there. And, you know, and she's like, to this day, my daughter hates Baltimore. She's born there. Mm. She, 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 she knows Atlanta more because she left when she was young. But she don't even like going back to Baltimore. Like, it's not good. She, how long she's like, been, she, after two days, she ready to go. Like she doesn't go out like that. She, she doesn't like because I think because of those those memories and shit. And you know, like I didn't when I got on the stand. I told him I think he's a great father. I, he was one, he was once a great father. I think his hatred over the years for me uh, overshadowed the love that he had for her. And that's where it came in. But when he went up there, he like it was like bash, 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 bash. Talk about me, but and that shit shows. Like the, I guess the judge had to look at it like, yo, she's not talking bad about this man. This man is just dogging her out. You know what I'm saying? Like. But Walker apologized. He was like, I just never could believe that. He was like, you know what I'm saying? Now I see. Because I guess as a man, you know, you hear women, but it's like women be, but he actually had to see it for himself. Like, I didn't even know they made niggas like this. Nah, and, <laughs> and even like, I asked about Walker because again, like, uh, being selfish, like, I, I'm in a s- s- situation that I was like, you do men get benefit. Men can be bitter. Yeah, you and, understand and that then, men are bitter. Yeah, but not even <laughs> that. It's just like, it's certain, it's certain things that I try not to get into because that's none of my business and I just have the best interest for my Which daughter, how either. I see it, right? So it's like, this should tell you something. I was with Waka since Charlie was four going on five. Mm. He has never had one conversation with Waka, ever. Mm. Waka reached out twice. He didn't want to talk. He never had a conversation with him. As a man, and you know that your daughter, not even a boy, even boys though, but your daughter is in another household with another man. If it was me, I would want to know everything I need to know about that man. Inside and out, I want to know who's around my child. Mm. 
that right there speaks volumes. You can that that shows that your ego as a your problem or whatever you had with me or ego, you wasn't man enough for your child to say, "Hey, listen, hey, bro, I want to talk to you. I want to know who you like. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's what's good? Like, you in here with my daughter? Da-da-da. If it was me and the shoes would turn, I would want to know everything about this woman. Like, mm. hey, you know, if it's anything that you need to know, let me know. If we can we can tag this thing together. We can, you know what I'm saying? It takes a village. I ain't. Nah, facts. You feel what I'm saying? But there's allow- a people, Men are no, not mature right. enough for that. You know a lot of saying? times we allow our pride to outweigh the lo- our pride and ego against someone else to outweigh the love for the person that it needs to be for. Yeah, and, and the it was love just, that's just what it was. It's like it was like that was my first boyfriend. First, I, I, people don't know we was married. I mm. married him when I was like eighteen or some shit. We was together for ten years. Like he was my he took my virginity. So it was a lot of bitterness and anger. Everything that he told me I couldn't do, I did. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I was for him. I was supposed to work at a bank. Or well, won't you just be a bank? Won't you just go be a nurse or some shit? I mean, you can sing, but so many bitches can sing out there. I mean, you cute, but there's so many pretty girls out there that model and shit. Like, you did it. Uh, everything you told me I couldn't do, I did. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody gonna want nobody with no child. Yeah, all right. Nah, <laughs> and you got somebody that loves you through that and is still loving on you and on your daughter, respectfully. Yo, I was I was wondering when it comes to marriage, right? You said something that um that hit home and you was like, you know, basically it was something around like being with somebody for so long that you know, you learn them and like, it's, it's, it's too late to go forward. It's too late. To, like something yeah, like sometime, that. Yeah. Sometimes you go through too much to go forward and you go through too much to go backwards. <sighs> That's true. Statement. You said that shit. And I, I I was recently talking to my friend and not trying to, I'm not trying to put too much in my relationship about it, but I was talking to my friend. I was saying, yo, I feel like sometimes me being with my girl for as long as we was together, it kind of like, it, it 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 blemishes my view sometimes. Like 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 think about it. I feel like if we was together for a year, I probably could been proposed. You know what I'm saying? But because we had so much time, right? You see so much. You go through so much, and those things start to like get in the way of what was real. I guess. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you've been with somebody so long, it's too hard to go forward, too hard to go back. Yeah. When you said like, that but, shit, hit home. I'm like, damn. Yeah, it because it's the truth. Sometimes you go through, when you go, you you don't realize that you have gone through so much with that person, like, and you look at it like, damn. Well, well, for me, it was like, okay, we didn't did it all together. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We done went through so much together. We didn't like that was my best friend. It's still my one of like, still one of my best friends. You know what I'm saying? Like. We, that was my best friend. That was my nigga. That was my husband. Um, we went through that. And then you go, it's like, do I want to, you grow. Sometimes you outgrow people. Mm. If the love is still, like, if you're still in love with that person and you you willing, like, to stick it out and make it work. But at the same time, you got to be happy. And you got to know whether or not, like, that's where you really, truly want to be. Sometimes you, you got to leave to know if that's the, the situation. Mm. We went through so many breakups. It was crazy. But um, how do you last, recognize? Oh, go ahead. The last the last time we, you know, well, we actually going through a divorce right now. But the last time we left, you know, I, we 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 separated and broke up. Um, it wasn't because of anything. It was because of that's the space that I was in. Mm. He didn't do anything. It wasn't like you know what I'm saying. It was just like okay, this is no longer what you have to realize. Like, what is it that you really want? And when you acknowledge, it, instead of holding on and wasting someone's time and 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 when you go through so much, you it, when it get to a point where you don't have the same respect for that person. Before it get to that point, it's best to bow out and save that friendship, mm. because it's a difference to lose your husband or your spouse or your 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 girlfriend, but to still have that bond and that friendship is like, damn, my nigga, I don't want to lose that. So I want to push back a little bit because I asked you before we started, do you believe in God? You said yes. Mm-hmm. Right, so we talk about marriage. We say to death do us part. Yeah, this is a conversation I had with my girl, and she was kind of like on the side of you, like, bro, like sometimes you gotta walk away, yeah, right? You do. And I was, I was pushing back heavy, so I'm gonna push back on you a little bit. So we get married, and I feel like sometimes we allow those, those emotions, those temporary emotions, not even the temporary emotions, the, the emotions that we have in the flesh, to outweigh or to override our commitment to God, because I feel like marriage is not just a commitment to. A human being, right? It's a commitment mm-hmm. to God. We 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 swore under oath to death to us part. And yeah, it might be hard at this time, right? And yeah, we might not agree, but we can get through it with the right counsel. Like we can get through it with the right steps. Do you feel like it was missed opportunity in that if you look at it from like a, a the marriage aspect of it? Yeah, when I look at marriage, I look at marriage different. I don't look at it like I feel like when you lay with a person, you pretty much 
you you a part of you marry into them. Mm. So a lot of men don't even understand that the reason why you feeling so weak in the flesh and the reason why you feeling like not the same that you once felt about your your spouse or your wife is because you're and when you lay with another woman, that energy and that spirit from that woman also is carrying back to your household. Like I remember I used to tell um I used to tell Walker years ago, I used to be like, shit, you wonder why when you come here, shit, all discombobulated, there's too many spirits on you. Like you don't, you don't, like, even if a woman, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to understand, like, it's not, marriage is, 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 to me, is a piece of paper. Like, I know some people who've been together for years. Like, I always refer to my grandma my grandfather. They separated when they was in their 30s. And my grandmother, my grandfather would come to the house, cook for my grandmother and her boyfriend, take care of the grandkids, see us, leave out. All right, old, I'm gone. Uh, my grandmother got sick. My grandfather moved in and took care of her. They want them married. They want intimate. They had, it, it, they had a, a love and a respect for each other. You know what I'm saying? That's for me. That's bigger than marriage. Mm. Like taking, like when you talk to God and you say, okay, I just, this is my woman's person I want to be with, and that's you're already married. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so you take an oath for God, but yeah, you also, you know, you that that's a really, your covenant between you and your the husband and wife and God. God's supposed to be always be in the in between that, right? There's no marriage without God put in it because it, it that's just what that is. But at the same time, you, you it's not fair for you to be able to say, okay, I'm going to do this, but we got to stick to this covenant because it's on the eyes of God, but you already broke the covenant when you already stepped out. Mm. So now if I'm unpleased and I'm unhappy with that, then I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm allowed. Because the Bible also say, you know, a person... Uh, you can divorce if there is infidelity yeah. or, you know, mm-hmm. something like that. I can't remember all of it. But so at the same time, that's just what that is, you know, but you have to be happy. Like happiness comes first. Like I can't make you happy if I'm no longer happy. But can't, can't you make serve- yourself happy th- if, outside of infidelity? Right. Because mm-hmm. you said the last time you left, yeah. it was no infidelity outside of infidelity. Right. Isn't it your job? Isn't it my job to make myself happy isn't it your job to make you happy that's, that's no this is what i'm saying i can't make you happy if i'm not happy mm. you feel what i'm saying and sometimes when you're in relationships you give so much and it's taken from you that you're not fulfilled so you as a woman or a man have to pull yourself away and say look I, you can't fix it. like somebody just asked me in the last interview i said uh walker made a statement about me being so broken that he could like a piece of glass that he couldn't fix right he was right he couldn't because only i could fix that mm. the damage was done now you can help me heal but you can't fix that because i'm the woman that got to piece myself back together mm. you feel what i'm saying like i have to go back to myself and in and, and prayer or in my room or look at myself in the mirror and say okay listen you have given so much it's time for you to fill yourself back up but you can't do I- you can't do that sometimes when you're in a relationship sometimes you can't because as i'm trying to fix myself you still remind me of what's broken you feel what I'm saying? Mm. You still, I'm still giving you. Sometimes some women, women are so un, we we are so naturally selfless. nurturous and selfless that even while we're broken, we still trying to give and fix. We are giving you everything we have while we're broken. Pass my phone, bro. I ask that because um, I feel that. Don't just don't just don't. I, I feel that. And, um, I was talking to my friend, and I want to read this Bible verse. I was talking to my friend, and um, I felt a similar way. I'm not gonna lie. And he was like, bro, you understand that uh, God put you here for this. Mm-hmm. And I remember he, he told me this. Like, and he read, he read this Bible verse to me. And I'm not trying to, like, peek no, nothing no, together. No, I'm no, just no. talking to you. And he was like, um, like he was like, yo, do you think um, all of your success came from the position that you hold for your woman and your daughter? And I'm like, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm like, no, nigga, I work hard. I would have been here regardless. But what, what, what else? I'm like, I, true, and he was like, nah, bro, like. You might feel like, cause sometimes I'm not gonna lie. Like sometimes I feel, sometimes I felt like I was pouring so much, and I didn't have anything else to pour from. My cup was empty. Mm-hmm. And my friend told me he was like, "Bro, that ain't for your girl to fill your cup." No. He was like, "That's for you to go back to the source and get your cup filled from God." So when you say that, I understand. I understand. But I was just curious because, like, I feel like sometimes we do be broken, and sometimes it is hard, and sometimes our partner do remind us of what was, but is it really for our partner to remind us or to make us feel any full when we need to be going back to the source to get that? Absolutely. And, but it's at the same time, it's also, like I said, family that pray together, you know, stay together too. But I, I personally feel like you have to keep identity, uh, identity outside of your partner. Mm-hmm. That's one thing 
I hate it when people, if Walker says something in the interview, they automatically assume that I felt that same way. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many times the Walker says shit, and I have to go and cuss him. I'm like, why the fuck would you say that, nigga? Like, da 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 We be in the household arguing, like, because I'm like, and I would break shit down to him in a different way. Like, there's, there's so, you, yes, when you marry, you become one. Absolutely. But you still are who you are. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? She's still who she is. You can't, and us as women, I don't know about men, men always, they, uh, 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 men, they focus on their papers. So if they paper not right, they can't give us but so much of like, yeah, shit, bitch, right, I can't yeah. lay up under you. My paper fucked up. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It took me years to understand that, like, okay, this nigga can't sit still. You know what I'm saying? What's going on? Usually when niggas' paper ain't right or they don't feel like they made their life goals, they not trying to get married, they not trying to cuddle, they ain't trying to do shit. They trying yeah. to get to that paper. <laughs> us as women, we don't give a damn what's going on. We still want to make sure we cater and give you everything we have. I had to learn how to get to a space where I'm like, you know what? I can like, I can't focus on everything this man got going on because I, I can't focus on myself. Mm. And it actually, when I start doing that, I started to notice that I started flourishing and we started, it, the respect started coming from both ends because now he's respecting me on a different level because he see me grinding, you know what I'm saying? Like, just like he's grinding, he see me pouring into myself. When you have a man that doesn't want to see you succeed or wants to see you flourish and that's a problem, you know what I'm saying? You said something about, oh, um, you know, if it wasn't, like, if it wasn't, for your your girl and her daughter, would you still be in the same position? You're like, nah, it's for me. I agree with your friend. Is that's right? Let me tell you something. Um, I remember like Walker told me a long time ago. He like when I got married, that shit like it put it it, it, it that shit in business made my business even better because people look at me now like, damn, he has responsibilities. Mm, mm, He's mm. a married man. Like it makes people look at you different. One, two, like I just told you before, like if it wasn't Walker gave me Walker didn't make me by far he didn't like she didn't make you what's going what's for you is going to be for you regardless now it might have came a different way you know what I'm saying but it was going to come but if it wasn't for Walker I wouldn't have had a platform to build on mm. I was Walker Flocker's girlfriend before I was Tammy Rivera I was Tammy Rivera before I was Walker Flocker's girlfriend but for the world they knew me as Walker Flocker's girlfriend and I had to take and build that take that platform and build my my brand off of that so if it wasn't for him, and I would never take that from him, I'd never be like, oh, because I got my own, blah, blah, blah. nah, fuck all that. The truth is, this is what it is. Mm. You might be here, I might be talking to you, but a lot, like you just said, a lot of these questions extend from her. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, facts, you, would, yeah. you get what 100%. I'm saying? So you wouldn't even be able to get to this in depth into that conversation. So woman influences, your wife influence, your girl, your, it's always there. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you are who you are. You don't lose your identity. But it's nothing wrong with taking that space to get to get into yourself. Like even for her or you, it don't. It's nothing wrong with saying, "Okay, I'm gonna step back." Um, and if I always say, "What's meant to be is be is gonna be." If you meant to be together, you're gonna be together. Ain't nothing in this world gonna stop that. And that's what I was asking. You can't take a step back and be you and and do everything you gotta do in that covenant. Like that's that's what I was curious. Like, but sometimes you sometimes you can't because it's like it's like. In the house, I'm just gonna use it as a metaphor. I'm a mother, right? Uh, maybe you got toddlers or some kids and some shit, and you're like, I gotta work. Well, you can't you work in the house with the kids there? No, because I'm gonna even if I have somebody to watch the kids while you still hear your kids cry. I want this one. Oh, it's over there in the cabinet. Oh, I get it, baby. Like you know, it's like you still can't focus because it's like I still have I feel my duties as a wife, mm -hmm. as a mother. Is kicking in when I'm supposed to be focusing on what I'm focused on, but I can't because my duties are always gonna override. You, you, you understand what yeah, I'm saying? I like, so sometimes I got to step back so I can solely focus on myself because if not, naturally, the nurturing woman in me is going to give that. If I see you hurt, I can't walk past like, oh, fuck that nigga. I don't give a fuck how that nigga. What's going on? You good? We want to talk about it? I might not need that shit from you because I'm trying to figure out what's going on with me. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I get it. I don't want to. I get <laughs> it. It's unfortunate because, again, like, I'm in a relationship. I'm looking for marriage and shit. I'm, I'm planning for marriage and shit like that. And it's like, like when I see things like that, it was, it seems like it was really good. Y'all have so much respect for each other. Just being honest, the selfish me is like, nah, I want that to, I want that to be successful. When I'm pretty sure everybody told you the same thing. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. But the thing is, it's like we have, we had something so beautiful. We raised a beautiful little girl together. We have a great friendship out of it. Like, it ain't Walker could call me today. Like, hey, bro, I did it. Out. I got you, my nigga. Like, vice versa. There, our our friendship didn't end. 
You know, you get what I'm saying? Like that's that's cool. Like if if he was to get married today and have a kid, I would pray to God I'd be that the mother would be cool enough to me for me to be around her kid or be like, oh, you come to the baby shower because I want to extend the love that he extended to mine back to him and his, 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 mm. you know what I'm saying to his. You know what I'm saying? Like. As a as a, a auntie, a godmother, or Charlie's mom, or my sister's mom, you you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, but that's how I am. That's you know? a fact. You know, I think the lesson in that is people do need to just be okay with that. Right? I feel like sometimes things go wrong because we don't accept that sometimes you got to go your separate and we try to force things yeah. that's not fitting. Like we're trying to force a key in a hole that's not fitting. It's never gonna open the door. Yeah. So it, the more we be accepting, to you know what. This ain't working. That don't. That doesn't mean that we can't be friends, and that doesn't mean that we have to hate each other. Because usually in a black community, when it don't work, automatically, fuck that nigga. And that. that's what I'm saying. But I didn't grow. That's what mm. I'm saying. And if you go back to like being, like your parents and your grandparents, they coexist so good together. Like it wasn't no thing. Like shit. Like oh, okay. Like come on, bro. I, we cook shit. I I grew up in households where like, if you know, like I said, my grandmother would be there with her with her boyfriend. My grandfather would come over there and cook because his grandkids there. So he's like, I'm coming to cook with my grandbabies and to make her and her nigga plate. Like, mm. it's like, you, you get what I'm saying? It was no disrespect. Come, you sit at our table with us. Like, there is no, we, 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 we're family. Mm. That's what people don't understand. Me and Waka will always be family. And you that's can't more important take, than all of it. That's it. That's hard. You can never take family away. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's just what it is. Yo, going your own subway, being this independent woman at this point right now, right? Like, you got your business going on. I think you got the uh, the boutique. Uh, it's like yeah, T um, um boutique uh, swimming resort wear off of Piedmont Road. Yep. Um, you got the skincare. I have line. my skincare line. I'm still working on my music. Yeah. Um, I'm supposed to be dropping some of this summer. I gotta let it go because people been fussing me out about it real bad. Um, that I'm working on some projects with Charlie. Am I missing anything? You kind of like, it's like you kind of like, kind of like you're growing up almost, right? Like you're yeah, growing up again. Yeah. You're growing into your, your yeah, independence. Yeah, it's like, it's, now it's, 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 it's this pace where it's like, it's time to turn a page. Now, now what's next for Tammy? Like, you know what mm. I'm saying? Like, what's next? I'm going to write my book soon. So I've been working on that. Um, just shedding skin. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And just becoming into a new me. I'll be 37 this year. Every two years you change to a different person. The person I am at 37, I'm not at 35. You know what I'm saying? It's like, crazy as much as we think we grew up and like now it's just I'm just becoming a butterfly. I'm just coming out of my cocoon. Like yeah, I thought and then I did shit, that by time, And then by the time you turn like 35, you gonna be like, yeah, I thought I, I was becoming a butterfly. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I, I'm, I'm out of here. Like it's that's just what it is. You know what mm. I'm saying? And you you every year, every every you grow. You and you like bad, good. You you know mm. you take it all. God gonna you know God don't make no mistakes. Amen. Not not even not the cliche. How does it feel, right? Not how do you feel, but looking in the mirror in your darkest days, or when you, the random moment you looking at Charlie and you reflecting on everything you came through, you reflecting on everything you got. What does that mean right now? Like, how does that really feel to have your own boutique, to be Tammy Rivera in the absence of Waka Flocka, to have your own skin skincare line? Like, what does that really mean to you? It just, it's you know I I don't look at like in an absent walk because even when I when when I was with Walker I all I, all this stuff was I was doing all these things and I never used like I always he he know like I had a thing like I didn't never want him in my business so my business was always in my business so I always was doing this without him I asked like hey what, you see this oh yeah that's fine but I never would like he was like, let me see let me get a nine again ain't done yet like mm. I you know I always was very independent and never crossed business paths um but uh. I don't feel like I, the crazy part is, you ask me, I feel like I ain't did shit. Because mm. there's so much more I want to do. So I always be like, shh. People be like, yo, I'm so proud of you. I'm like, shit, I ain't even did nothing yet. Because mm. there's so much I want to do. Like, I remember, um, I always said I was going to sing the national anthem at the, for the Ravens. And I sung at the Ravens in the, um, in the Steelers game, at the playoffs. That was huge for me. And I've done that. So I was like, okay, now what? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, every, it's like, I just, until I'm, completely 100% comfortable to where though I have shit to leave to my daughter's children, 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 I ain't comfortable. But outside of everybody else, though, right? I want to strip. I'm trying to peel back these layers. Fuck everybody else respectfully, right? If you could reflect. If you need to take some time, we could take some time. I want you to take some time and really reflect on, like, the moments you did want to sing at the Ravens game, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you wanted that for a minute. See, the crazy thing is, and, this is, and people ask me that, 
and it's going to sound crazy. It might sound cocky. It might sound, I always knew. It was going to happen. This is where I was going to be. Mm. Always. But it means something now that is this here. It got you. It got you. And I'm, I'm grateful. I'm when you're drunk one day, and when you you got, you got know how you had them drunk and you be crying? Like you drunk, you were reflecting on everything. It got to be a moment That's where it's usually, like, damn, bro. I usually just, when I, when I get to that moment, I'm usually just praising God. Like mm. when I get to that, like, that crying and like it's mostly a worship of like thank you father like you know what I'm saying that's mostly where that come when that when that comes in play is usually where that go at mm. but honestly speaking it's like I dream my people that I used to dream about or watch on TV became my peers things that I said like even when I was in school they're like oh what do you want to do when you grow up and I'm like I'm gonna be a singer well, you gotta find something else because that's not that's not and I'm like bitch I'm gonna be a singer like I used to be getting put out of school I'm like fuck you mean like I'm gonna be a singer like I used to get mad when teachers like well you have to have a backup plan. Bitch, I'm going to be a singer. Like, it ain't no back. I'm going to be a singer and a designer. That's what I'm going to be. And I used to really, you know, Baltimore kids bad as shit. So that's, yeah. what, and that's what you became, though. Yeah, but, you know, but that's every job I had, I got fired from. I used to work. I used to be a manager at Walmart, manager at Target. I worked at Home Depot. I worked at fucking Thompson Prometric Call Center. I worked, you name it. I worked at Macy's. I worked at TJ Maxx. You, I worked, I got fired from every job. And every time I would get fired, my friends and stuff would be crying. Like, oh, I, I, I'm like, bitch, I won't plan on being a CEO of that company. Like, I, I want my okay like i know that i was gonna work for myself i never asked somebody this i'm gonna ask you this never i thought i thought this this and this question was cliche but i'm gonna ask you because i'm curious okay you knew you was gonna be here you here right mm -hmm. but it was something that if you could look back 20 years and tell 17 year old tammy if you could tell her something what would it be if i could look back 17 years and tell tammy i would say know your worth mm. know your worth know your worth actually i can still say that to this day like, what know, is that? What is your worth, though? What are you worth? What does that mean? Know your worth. Know who you are. Mm. Because people see who you are, but they will make you feel like you... Uh, sometimes people uh, let you operate in lower than your worth because you match their... They're their, 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 who they are. So <laughs> if, if I knew who I was back then... Mm. I mean, I knew I was a bad bitch. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but <laughs> not in that sense. Like, I, I was so... I always... Because I grew up the way I grew up, I grew up very, very, very humble. I come from a My mom used to get high. I, you know, grew up fucking poor. You know what I'm saying? We had ups and downs. I grew up just the, the cliche Baltimore stuff. We were just talking about this shit. Like, you meet people from Baltimore, you be like, oh, if I meet people from Atlanta, like, my mom's got, oh, I'm so sorry. People from Baltimore, like, shit, my mom got high too. Like, like, I was about to say, me? I was about to say, but I didn't want to take away yeah, from the moment. Like, I'm like, me too. Like, my mom got high too. Yeah, like, girl, like, what she was at? Like, but that's, that's, you know, that's our, that's, that's our culture and mm, what we grew mm, up in. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So I I didn't I oh and then me being looking the way I look or dressing the way I used to always dress up and fix shit up and people always had a perception of who I was. Like, oh she think I always fought. Oh she thinks she all that, oh she this, she that. Really, and I'm up here thinking I'm like, damn bitch, we going through the same shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm going through the same thing. Y'all going through behind closed doors and my shit just look different because I dress it up. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I always had to extra dumb myself down to make other people feel comfortable. Mm. And I got comfortable in operating in that realm to where as though I will allow a nigga to dumb me down. Mm. You, you you get what I'm saying? Like growing up and and um if I if I could just tell Tammy anything is like, girl, know your worth and like step out on like don't be afraid. Like I I would talk myself out. Like something I know I could do, I talk myself out of it. And I still do that shit sometimes a lot, actually. Shut up. <laughs> but, you know, I would talk myself. Hey, well, you're going to have to watch this back. And you, this is what you're saying. Yeah. I ain't saying this. <laughs> like, yeah, said but I would do that shit a lot. And I would just tell, like, and I would tell, like, any any young girl, like, that know, like, you, you, you if you don't believe that shit, ain't nobody going to believe it. Like, mm. period. Like, no, you can't expect for nobody to believe you are who you are if you don't show them who you are. You know what mm. I'm saying? So, that's the only thing I would tell my 17 year old self. Like, girl, know who you are. Like, know your worth. Damn, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, I hope y'all look at this shit. All the ladies that watch this, even the men, just comment, thank you. Like, yo, this is, <laughs> bro, I can't stress enough how much I appreciate you, how refreshing this was oh, because, thank you. oh my God, talking to these celebrities, <laughs> bro, it'd be like talking to a brick wall. Like, they have no, no get, depth to there's them. No, there's no real. <sighs> person like this uh, because everybody now is just focused on the bad bitch that the cars the clothes the shoes the, ju the jewelry the this the that you know what i'm saying and i, and I get it because that's what most of these children be wanting to fucking hear about but 
it's just it's a great refreshing interview you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. I, I, I love it i, I mean i'm always gonna be authentically myself ask me i'm gonna say it if it's something you know what i'm saying like i'm not gonna sugarcoat shit i'm gonna be honest and that's just what it is but i enjoyed this interview no, thank you so much uh, i guess for the people that don't know everybody want to know but you know plug your businesses how to follow you all that oh, political yeah. shit. well that. i'm charlie's angel on instagram with three l's uh, my skincare line is big here by t rivera um say that again because you know we got that baltimore accent it, but yeah I enunciate said, that Bakir, I, I pronounced it wrong too because I'm from Baltimore, but it's B E C C A R E. Okay. Um, Bakir by T. Rivera. And um, you have T. Rivera swimwear line um, that's online, and I have a store on Piedmont Road. Uh, actually, we have a blowout sale going on right now. So, like, I'm getting rid of everything in the store because mm. I'm working on a project. So, everything in the store is like 60% off. Mm. Um, all the swimsuits, resort wear, everything. Um, yeah, so come and see me. Come holler at me. Tammy yeah. Rivera, everybody. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Don't get no better than this. This is Period. a wrap. We out. <laughs>